Hi, I'm Dr. Stan Kucher, and I'm going to talk for a little bit about how most stress is actually really good for you. Wow, how could he be talking about that? We all know that stress is bad. No, that's completely wrong. There is some stress which is bad. It's called toxic stress. And that is really bad stress, like living in Aleppo, like being sexually abused, like experiencing severe neglect, deprivation. That's toxic stress. And when some people are faced with toxic stress, they develop mental health difficulties and sometimes even a mental disorder. But most stress is not like that. In fact, most of us go through most of our lives without ever experiencing toxic stress. But schools and our society have been doing a really bad job of teaching us that usual everyday good stress is the same thing as toxic stress and that's completely wrong. In fact, usual everyday stress, social relationships, doing your homework, taking an exam, trying out for, for the sports team or the orchestra or the debating club. Those are good stresses. They actually help us tune our bodies. Our brains improve with the stress. They learn how to handle the stress. They learn how to overcome it. They learn new skills. We call that resilience and adaptation. And they learn it all by themselves. They don't need a program to teach it to do that because human beings have been doing that for millennia. And you can do it too. The right way to do that is approach everyday stress with the expectation that the feelings you get, that stress response that your body is doing with the expectation that it's a good thing. And all the research actually shows that if you think that stress is bad, you do poorly. But if you think that the stress is good, you do exceedingly well. And we need to rethink what we call this normal everyday stress. It's not the toxic stress. It's not what people refer to as the fight or flight phenomenon. Yeah, that exists. But our brains have that to help save us when we're faced with a horrible situation, you know, like a tiger jumping out at you, or in our society, a truck coming barreling down the street, or someone's got a gun. That's fight or flight. That happens rarely. Most stress is what we call excite and delight. It gets us ready to do courageous things. It gets us ready to take on the world and make the world our oyster. That signal is the signal that we need to perform. That signal is the excitement of the challenge that we're about to undertake. The wrong thing, and this is important, the wrong thing is to interpret that signal as negative. The wrong thing is to try to avoid the stressor. The wrong thing is to try to simply focus on decreasing that stress response, whether it is through meditation or deep breathing or whatever that you do. If all you do is focus on decreasing the stress response without understanding that it's the excitement that leads to solving the problem that led to the stressor in the first place, it's that engaging with life if all you do is try to decrease the stress response, you never learn to engage with life. And so then when really big problems come about, you're going to have difficulty. You know, you can think about your body's immune system. Your brain is, works the same way. You are exposed to thousands, millions of bacteria and viruses every single day, but you don't get sick. Why? Because your brain recognizes, your body recognizes these bacteria and viruses says, aha, I've got good defenses, I can deal with them. And it goes into overdrive, you make your immunoglobulins, your killer T cells and B cells do their thing, and you don't get sick, and you build immunity. You build the capacity for when something really bad comes along, you'll be much better at dealing with it. In fact, we have a whole public health approach that is built on stressing your immune system. It's called vaccinations. 
What we need is a public health system that provides good everyday stress so that you can learn how to overcome it, not run away from it, and not avoid it. Thanks. I'm Dr. Stan Kutcher.